If you're recovering from a breakup right now, you're probably searching for answers, trying to figure out what to do. How do I make this pain go away? How can I put myself on a path to not feeling this anymore. People are gonna point us in all different directions to try to give us advice, like go out there and mingle, stay home and get yourself together, get a dog. And ultimately we're all out here trying to fend for ourselves, learning from other people to figure out what is going to work for us. Almost kind of wish healing was something that was taught in school, but it was not, and neither was learning how to do our taxes. And in this video, I'm gonna break down the three steps that I took to properly heal from my last relationship. And I firmly believe that if you get a jump start on these three steps, you'll probably heal a lot quicker than I did. So to jump right in here, step one or phase one of the breakup recovery is really a period of introspection. This is where we take some time for ourselves. We're not just gonna jump right into ways to deflect the pain or distract ourselves. Let's sit with this for a little bit and figure out some self-care practices, some routines that are just gonna get us through this first phase. We are highly susceptible to being triggered in this first phase. So to really alleviate all this pressure and all of this high intensity emotions that are racing through us, it's best to just push back a little bit and sit with ourselves. Now during this phase, something that I also did was to get a therapist. And getting a therapist or a coach is just having somebody in your corner that is going to recommend things that we could do like cognitive behavioral therapy, or it's just going to hold us accountable to positive self-care and healing practices. It's not going to let us stray too far away because when we get a therapist and we open up to them and we're honest with them about what we're going through, they will generally be able to put themselves in our shoes and make sure that the things we're doing from day to day are things that are conducive to healing and conducive towards a positive path. And the last part of this phase or this first step is to really take responsibility for our role in this relationship not working out and in this breakup being inevitable. What I mean by taking responsibility is not putting all of the weight of this breakup onto that other person, trying to avoid the blame game for things not working out. Things just didn't work out and that is a totally neutral thing. Yes, maybe they did something that was unforgivable. Maybe we were the ones that weren't there the way we needed to be there. But ultimately, pushing all of the blame onto that other person or totally beating ourselves up for the fact that this didn't work out is not going to help us heal because that's what a lot of people do. They can blame the other person for the relationship not working out and then hop right into another relationship where it doesn't work out and then they'll avoid any responsibility for that relationship not working out and so on and so on and so on. In order to really start healing, we need to step away from that cycle. And this is why phase one or step one is ultimately about introspection, self-care, and taking responsibility for that relationship not working out. For those first few months, I was having awful dreams. I would wake up nauseous. I was a mess and I was searching for anything that I could do to get me through this period. And I found out that just waking up and playing video games for the first couple hours would at least get me through that period of intense nausea 
and pain. But when all of that pain and nausea and intensity subsides, it's time to do the work. And that's when I was stepping into taking walks, doing writing exercises, listening to music, talking to my therapist, having, you know, talking to people on the phone, just trying to sit with my bubble a little bit and build up what my support system is. And a lot of it was YouTube videos like the one I'm making right now. And this is pretty much the reason why I'm making this YouTube video and why I made a whole playlist on my healing journey documenting each phase that I was going through. So as things calm down and we're less and less emotionally unhinged, we can move then into phase two, which is really about healing and targeting what our exposed wounds are. There's gonna be a lot of wounds coming up, like not feeling worthy. We lost the one person that we thought was going to be the rest of our lives. This is where acceptance is really gonna start to kick in because that first phase, we still might be in denial about the whole thing whether consciously or subconsciously, there might be a part of our brain that still feels like this isn't real, right? And that radical acceptance for that relationship being over, that future that you planned on with this person not happening is going to take time for our body, our brains, and our subconscious to really come to terms with. So one of the most powerful things that I picked up during this time to heal was to meditate, to actually target the exposed wounds that I had and meditate specifically on those things. Ultimately, that came down to acceptance forgiveness, and then gratitude. Those were the three big things that I was choosing to meditate with. Once we accept that that relationship and that future is no longer going to be a reality, then we move into forgiving ourselves and forgiving that other person for this relationship not working out because again, it's a fundamentally neutral thing. And once we can come to terms with that, then we move into gratitude and actually being thankful to have that experience, to have that relationship as something to learn from, as something to grow from, as something that will make us a better person in the long run. And probably the biggest thing to heal our emotional state and our spirit is to practice letting go. And there are a lot of letting go meditations out there that are really great and that's something that I was definitely engaging in. But I also took it one step further and bought this letting go book. And you can see I got all these post-its in here for things that I especially wanted to take note of as things that will probably be future videos. And I just put out a video reviewing this book and the three big shifts that happened for me from reading this book and I'll link that at the end. But to let go is a whole nother meditative process where we're sitting with those past memories and those negative emotions that are coming up and we're letting them pass through us. We're not trying to distract ourselves with something. We're not trying to forget about it quickly. We're actually just sitting with that emotion, sitting with that thought, that feeling for a minute and really rising above and telling ourselves, it's okay, let it pass through us. These negative emotions don't hold power over us. We can just let them go and we'll feel a lot lighter and our emotional baggage will be a lot lighter as well. Because ultimately what I learned is that if I don't let go of it, I hold on to it. And that technique and that process of letting go was something I was doing 
in the morning, at night, throughout the day, whenever I had a moment where I wasn't actively doing something, like in the shower, in the bathroom, washing dishes, folding clothes, those moments where we're really with our own thoughts are the perfect moments to practice letting things come up, exposing ourselves to those negative thoughts, and then letting them flow through us and out the door. And as we let go of things day to day, week to week, month to month, we eventually get to the third and final phase, which is finding a new purpose in life and really putting together a new identity for ourselves. This can be a trial and error process of figuring out new hobbies, figuring out things to do to fill up our free time. What are we passionate about? What gets us excited? That's really the key is following what will get us excited. And for me as a creative person, as an empathic person, what was getting me excited was learning more about this stuff and figuring out ways to share it with the community. So my new purpose and my new identity and my new hobbies, they all revolved around creative expression, writing blogs, making YouTube videos, podcasting, making music, going out and talking with other people, going to shows, going to protests, going to things that were going to inspire me, make me want to learn more because I sort of got on this path where I was really into learning. Like I was really, for the first time in my life, I was like, I wanna get books, I wanna get a library card, I wanna kind of learn as much as I can so that I can become a better person, a better artist, and just somebody that other people can learn from. The more I took in, the more I wanted to give back. And that was the intention that I really set in order to start leveling up as a person, was I wanted to level up as a person. I set that intention. And that's a powerful thing throughout this healing process, is to systematically start setting intentions for ourselves and executing them. Even from the first phase to the second phase, setting the intention that you want to heal, setting the intention that you want to process this fully. You don't just wanna speed through and step on the gas pedal and get right into the next relationship. You wanna actually take the time to get through this the best possible way so the next relationship is going to be a better one. Maybe the next relationship is going to be the one. All our relationships are reflections of us in some way. They're a reflection of where we were at mentally, physically, spiritually to attract ourselves to that other person and to be in a relationship for however long we were. Not only was that relationship a reflection of where we were at, but it's also a lesson that we need to learn in order to take us to the next level of relationships of us as a person. Because if we don't level up, again, we're gonna go into that cycle of having the same kind of relationship over and over again, or even a worse kind of relationship because we're just getting more and more weighed down by the emotional baggage we're avoiding to process. Now, to be totally transparent, this whole process took me about a year. I am sitting here a year into this 
healing journey. And if you want to see where I was throughout the course of that year, you can check out my healing journey playlist up here and see exactly where I was on day one and see the growth as the weeks and months went on this past year. If you want more videos on how to level yourself up, you definitely want to subscribe to the channel. And if you dig this video, if this is putting you on your healing journey, or if this helped at all in any way, I want you to put a comment and let me know specifically what you think was the best piece of advice that you got out of this video. Aside from that, a couple videos on letting go up here is going to be my review of the letting go book. And I talk a little bit about the letting go technique in that video, but the ultimate video on the letting go technique is going to happen down here. So I hope to see you in the next video. Thanks so much for watching and stay creative.